guys, this week I'm going to show you how I made this carbide cutting tool for the lathe. Stick around. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of BS with AJ. As I said before, this week I'm going to be showing you how I made these carbide cutting tools for the lathe. Now this one's completely done. I already turned the handle, I got it finished out and everything. Uh, this is the one with the round uh, carbide tool on it. And they're actually pretty easy to make. But I'll be honest with you, I actually turned this handle using just the bar itself and the carbide tool on there. So, let me show you what I got here over here. I actually made another one to put the uh, square uh, carbide tool on. And I used it just like this to be able to turn that, to turn the handle for it. And I switched out the square for the round, uh, the round scraper and things like that. And uh, like I said, it's actually somewhat comfortable. This is about a two foot long piece here. And it's, you know, you can get a good grip on it and everything. And as you're cutting, you know, it's honestly not that bad. So if you don't want to waste your time putting a handle on that for now, if you just want something for the time being, uh, you can make these for pretty much next to nothing. And I'll be sure to link all the description uh, in the description below all the material that you'll need for this project. It's not that expensive. And if you go to price actual carbide tools that they sell, they're pretty high dollar. Uh, now the handle here I made for this one was made out of firewood. It's actually a hickory that I bought from a local store in a bag for smoking and uh, it just kind of worked out. It had a couple cracks in it. Uh, when I first opened the bag up, they didn't show any cracks at all on the wood itself, so I thought it was going to be a great piece to use. But as I started turning it, I found some cracks on the inside of it. So I filled them up with glue and sanded them down and everything. So, I mean, honestly, I pretty much made this for, I don't know an exact dollar amount or anything, but it was pretty dang cheap. And I've looked at them online before and they're pretty expensive. So uh, before we get started in this video, if you like videos like this, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and consider supporting BS with AJ on Patreon so we can do bigger and better projects for you guys. Let's go ahead and get started. Alright guys, so I went to my local hardware store and I bought a half inch by half inch square uh, solid bar, smiled steel basically is what it is. And you should be able to pick that up at uh, your local hardware store wherever you're at. So like I said, it's half inch wide by half inch wide and it's four foot long. So I'm gonna cut it directly in half. So 24 inches is gonna be directly in half. This is gonna make two different carbide tools. Now I've seen people make them out of the square tubing. I don't think that's a very good idea, but I, you know, to each their own. This isn't a hardened steel, this is a mild steel. So there is a chance that it won't be strong enough, but if they can get by with using a hollow tube, which I've seen people do the square, the half inch by half inch square tubing, then this solid bar should be stronger than that, in my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. But basically what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and cut this in half. I've already got my handle started. I'm making it out of some, uh, out of some hickory uh, that I bought at a store. It's actually just some firewood or some smoking wood, actually. It's been kiln dried. And uh, so I went ahead and cut it up. I got the center board out with a square hole here. I cut it uh, directly in half and uh, board out the center for this to fit inside already. I've got that glued up and it's drying now. So we're going to start working on our metal part of this. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this in half and then we'll start doing our work to make our uh, pieces fit on here basically. Alright guys, so I've got my piece of steel here. I've got an angle grinder and I've got a cutoff wheel on it. Make sure you have your handle on here. Make sure you use both hands as you're cutting. These things can get away from you and do a lot of damage, so be careful about it. Grip your uh, workpiece down before you start cutting. Make sure it's good and secure. And uh, make sure and wear safety glasses, and honestly, you probably need to be wearing a face shield as well. I'm going to be. I've already had one piece of metal fly in my eye a long time ago, and it's not a fun experience. So I always suggest wear the proper safety glasses and a face shield if you're doing a lot of metal cutting. Mainly because of that one experience I had. And I'll tell you what, it was a really bad one. I don't suggest it. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and get this cut now. Alright guys, I got my end cut down. And I went ahead and filed down these edges here. And I sanded it a little bit with some 80 grit sandpaper to make sure there's no sharp edges on this. All right, now here comes a very precise part. So let's get our hardware set out. 
Alright guys, so let's go ahead and go over the hardware I got. I've got an 832 NC drill and tap set right here. And then we have our 832, uh, their flathead socket cap screws. So uh, they're stainless steel. As you see here, they've kind of got a taper on the edge here, or on the head here. So that way it'll fit in these, uh, these carbide sets here. Uh, they are third, uh, let's see here, they are three-eighths of an inch long, they're stainless steel. I'll be sure and link all this in the description below so you know where to get this stuff. And then I've got two different types of carbide tools here. So I've got the round ones and I've got the square ones. And I think whenever I put this, wherever I end up putting it on the edge of this here, I should be able to uh, interchange them if I want to. Alright, so there's the end we already have rounded over and everything and we're going to have to have this sitting pretty close to that edge. You don't want to be real, you don't want to be too close to it, but you want to be pretty close to that edge. So that way you can actually use that cutting edge. Uh, so you're going to definitely want to use a, uh, excuse me, you're definitely going to want to use a drill press for this. If you do it by hand when you're this close to the edge, your screw may or may not uh, be in the right spot basically. You could lose a lot of strength that way. So do it however you want to, but I'm going to be using a drill press personally. You may want to start with a smaller bit and then move up to this one. So maybe use like an eighth inch pilot bit or something like that, or even smaller maybe even, maybe a sixteenth of an inch, whatever you feel comfortable doing. But uh, we're going to be using this drill and tap set that I bought. We're going to go ahead and go probably all the way through. That way if I want to flip it around, maybe I could do that. I'm, I'm not for sure on this. So uh, I think that's the way we're probably going to do it though. Alright guys, I used a, a hammer and a punch here to make sure and get that a good start. I'm going to be using a real small drill bit to pilot this hole all the way through. I measured center point of my bar this way and then I just kind of lined this up on the edge to show about how much I wanted to stick over basically. And I just kind of did it like that, set it right where it needed to be and then went ahead and marked it. Alright guys, I've got my piece uh, anchor down here. I've got my drill press set up with the smallest bit that I could get. I'm not really sure what size it was. I don't quite remember. I was just digging through my drawer full of bits and this is the one I found. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I've got this pretty close to where my where my punch mark was. It may be just slightly off, but it's not going to be off by very much. So I'm going to be using a little bit of WD-40 to help uh, make sure this bit doesn't overheat because it's so small. But anyway, let's go ahead and start drilling now. Alright, so we got our pilot bit all the way through now. That's good. Alright, now what we're going to do is go ahead and switch our bit out to the size we actually need to use here that came with our tap set. Alright guys, we got our bits changed out here. We're going to go ahead and use WD-40 on this one as well and go probably just as slow if not a little slower. We're going to be trying to clean it off as often as we can because we don't want to mess up <laughs> excuse me, we don't want this hole to get crooked or anything like that. Because this is what's going to be holding on our carbide tool. And you know, it needs to be good and secure. So let's go ahead and do that real slow like. Got that drilled now. That actually went very easily with that bit there. That other bit I was using was a 16th inch bit, by the way. This one's our uh, three 
32nd, I believe. Alright guys, so I've got my tool here and unfortunately even as the tightest it'll go, it won't actually fit very snug. But we're going to go ahead and try to use it anyway. The other thing I could do would be take a pair of vice grips or something and grip it onto this square end here. I could probably do it that way, but honestly I feel like this will be a little better. Even though it's not tightened up as tight as it'll get. We want to make sure and use some kind of oil. They do have cutting oil specifically for this. And I'll be sure and link some of that down in the description below. But uh, all I've got on hand is WD-40, so it's going to have to work. You want to do this nice and slow too. If you've ever had to tap anything before, you'll know that you need to go in a little bit, come back out a little bit. Like we're all the way through now. I'll spray some mess through there to clean the hole out. Clean this back up. We'll just go ahead and do it by hand. Run it all the way through. Yeah, there it is, all the way through. Awesome. All right, so we've got our bit here on on this. I forget the actual name of this bit here, but I'll be sure and. Uh, Put a link to that down in the description below as well. So we're going to oil it real good, get lined up on it. We're just slowly going to do this because we don't want to mess up all the threads we just put in here. Let's go ahead and try to put this back in again. Alright, so we didn't hurt our threads any while we did that. Let's see if we went deep enough or not though. Alright, we got it good and tight. And this isn't moving around any at all now. So yeah, you just had to go just a little bit to taper that. And like I said, I'll be sure and put a link to this bit here in the description below. This is what it looks like. And uh, like I said, I'll put a link to all this stuff in the description below. Alright, so now we got that pretty good. Probably what I need to do is take this back off and round these edges over slightly. So that way uh, we can, we've got access to all these sides. 
and I'll probably go ahead and do that by hand. Alright guys, well that concludes all the metal work. I actually ended up getting a little tired of doing it by hand with the file, so I ended up getting the grinder and grinding it all down. I did that off camera because my camera kind of died on me. Sorry about that. Anyway, uh, that's the end of this week's video. We're going to pick up part two, working on the handle and putting it all together and everything next week. So uh, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and consider supporting BS with AJ on Patreon so we can do bigger and better projects for you guys. And I'll see you next week. Yeah.